Here's our next example of how to calculate something in an object in free fall. This time we're going to find the time that it takes for an object to hit the ground when it's dropped from a certain height. Again, I take the same example, 20 meters height, initial height. We're dropping it, so V initial in the y direction is equal to zero. We're not throwing it down and we're not throwing it up. So what will be the time before it hits the ground? And that's a very important part of uh, free fall. And in the next chapter, we'll deal with projectile motion, another very important concept. It's called time in the air. How long does it take for the object to hit the ground? And you'll see that later that that's a very important concept. So this is an important part of free fall motion. Now, which equation do you think we're going to need to solve this problem? Well, obviously, the second one is not a good one because there's no time in that equation. Uh, the first one doesn't have anything as far as the height from which it drops. That's probably not a good one. I would say that the third one right here is probably our best bet. So let's go ahead and try that equation. So we have y equals y initial plus v initial in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. And of course, we're solving this for time, so it looks like we're going to have to solve a quadratic equation. Now, the initial uh, velocity in the y direction is zero, so this term will go to zero. The final height, y, is zero when it hits the ground, so this goes to zero. So then all we have left is zero equals the initial height, which is 20 meters. And I'll leave the units off so it's a lot cleaner. Uh, plus one half times g, g is a minus 9.8 meters per second square times t squared. So now we have to solve that equation for t. Simplifying a little bit, we get 0 is equal to 20 uh, minus 4.9 t squared. Moving this term to the left side, we get 4.9 t squared is equal to 20. Dividing both sides by 4.9, we get t squared is equal to 20 divided by 4.9. And now we have to, of course, take the square root. And so t is equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of 20 over 4.9. You say y plus or minus, well, it's always a good idea to have both answers there, and then we'll just pick the right one, what, the one whatever makes sense. So I have 20 divided by 4.9, take the square root of that, and we get 2.02 seconds. So t is equal to 2.02 seconds. Now that's plus or minus. So which is the most logical uh, answer, well, if you're going to drop it and time starts at zero when you drop it, of course, it'll be 2.02 seconds later when it hits the ground. So the positive answer seems to make sense. So t equals plus 2.02 seconds is the answer. So what does the negative answer mean? Well, it turns out the negative answer is, uh, for example, let's say you throw an object up from this height all the way up to 20 meters, and then it comes back down then, of course, it was on the ground before it gets to that height. And that would have been 2.02 seconds before you get to this position right there. So the negative answer actually means that the time, it would, the time that, it's, that it takes to go from here to there is 2.02 seconds. So 2.02 seconds before it reaches that height, it would have been on the ground as well. So that's really what that negative answer means. But for our problem, since we're simply dropping the ball from that height down to the ground, of course, 2.02 seconds later, it will hit the ground, and that's the logical answer. So time in the air, very important concept, and typically you will use this third equation to solve that almost every single time.